So I'm going to try and do a video on what you would do if you have rings, and of course they have gemstones in them that don't take heat. Uh, this, this is kind of a tough thing to teach people because you really have to have a torch that has the capabilities of getting really hot and, and soldering something very quickly. Uh, this is a really thick band. Now it, it doesn't have a stone in it, but if it did and that stone couldn't take heat, uh, the way I would do it is with a little container of water. Uh, there's a lot of things on the market like Cool Jewel and some other things. People put things in potatoes. But the reason I use water is that I can keep an eye on, on the water and if it starts to boil then I know that I have the temperature up. I mean it depends on sea level and atmosphere and all that stuff but I, I have a pretty good idea that I'm somewhere around 200 degrees at that point. But with a potato or with the other things, uh, years ago we used to use asbestos and it worked, it was a great heat blocker, but the thing is, is you just can't, you can't see what's going on. And so that's why I, I go with the water. So uh, a big heavy band like this is the hardest of all. And of course, I use propane and oxygen, and I have what is known as a Hoke torch. I can get a really big flame on it, it's really hot, and even doing that, it's still difficult. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the solder and actually put it already into the piece. That way, it, it um, takes away one step of trying to get the solder uh, to on a poker and on there. So the key is speed here, heat and speed on a big ring. So let's just uh, try this and see how it goes. Again, I've got a lot of heat. Let's see if I can get a better flame here. Now this is a lot of heat. Boom, she already soldered it. That took uh, just a few seconds. Looking underneath, it's, it's soldered from underneath. But if you have the little butane torches and stuff, you're not going to be able to do that. So the type of torch is very important. So now I would just submerge the rest of it and uh, set it on a metal block somewhere and let it cool down but it's per for the most part it's pretty cool if I have a thinner ring that say silver like this one again I would I would put it down into the water with my just a basic third hand you don't need anything fancy and again I would do this the same way but uh, not quite as much heat But you always have to remember that You never want to take a chance with a customer stone and if it's your own stone You have to be sure that you can afford to replace it So I put the flux on there And I'm just going to heat this quickly. Boom, it's already done. That was seconds, you know, but with your butane torches, you're looking at, uh, I don't know, it'll take you just too long, and by that point you'll, you'll never be able to flow the solder because the water will start to uh, boil and it'll start going up the sides of the ring. So, Here's another thing. Now, I haven't done this in a while, but when I had a trade shop and I was doing, you know, 10 rings a day or more for 10 years straight, pretty much, 
I would I would take the gold rings. Uh, the the heat doesn't transfer as quickly, and I would use a lot of heat, and I would heat from underneath. I'd put the solder in there, and I would heat it in my fingers. See how I can still hold it. And I already flowed the solder. And then I would set it into a uh, into water, and that teaches you really quickly how fast uh, heat travels down in in a gold ring. But I hope this helps you. But it's it's not something that a beginner should do unless they really understand their torch and know how fast solder will flow. So I hope this helps you. Thank you.